After you have managed to regain your wits and salvage the remains of your lost temper, you brace yourself for what might be one more nasty shock of many. You bend down, and with another deep breath, lift the cloth on the room service cart, ready for anything. It isn't what you were expecting. It's not a monster or a bloody mess, at least not as far as you can tell. The only thing under the tray is what appears to be a cutie doll, like the kind they used to give out at Carmel's decades ago. This one looks almost brand new, but seems to have lost both its arms. You turn the doll over carefully in your hands, looking for some place to hide the key. It's not where you first look, in the diaper, and you're thinking you might have to remove its head to find the special surprise inside. That is, if it turns out the bitch wasn't totally bullshitting you. You turn the doll over once more, and freeze as it opens its mouth. It's one of those horrible dolls that talk when you turn them a certain way, and this one's voice box seems to be on its way out. Its creaky voice sends a chill through your spine. You notice that its mouth is now stuck open. There seems to be something lodged in it. This doll, frankly, gives you the heebie-jeebies, and you want to be done with it as soon as humanly possible. You turn the thing over and shake it as vigorously as you can, but whatever is lodged in there does not come out. Unrelentingly, you whack the armless lump of plastic upside the head. Once, twice, then something falls from its mouth, lands on the floor. The thing cries out, and is then silent. You kneel down and pick up the item that fell from the doll's mouth. It is indeed a key. The key to room 303, in fact. If it actually works, you suppose that's a good thing you came in here. You slip the key into your overly full pocket and wonder for a moment what to do next. After a thought, you take the safety pin off the doll and pin it to your sleeve so you won't lose it. You set the now diaperless doll on the cart, and though you're loath to turn your back on such a creepy thing, you leave the eerie pink room. You head back out into the long hallway. Looking around, nothing seems to have changed, and you don't see any monsters around. You decide, firmly, that you're going to head straight for room 303, and get the heck out of here. Even if it is what the creepy one wants you to do, you're pretty sure that if James were in this hotel, you would have run into him by now. And that means you can get out of here. As your thoughts and feet wander down the hallway, you stop short, eyes wide, and look around, as if you hear an enormous thump from somewhere in the hallway. Or did it come from one of the bathrooms? What was that noise? Who cares? You decide you really do not want to know and fling yourself faster down the hallway towards room 303. You rush past the bathrooms and turn the corner sharply, nearly barreling into the opposite wall before regaining your balance. As you run, you notice a series of large, bloody smears on the carpet, either leading to or originating from 308. Like the noise, you do not stop to investigate it. Right now, you have more important things on your mind like getting out of here alive. You skid to a stop in front of room 303 and dig through your coat for the key. You manage to pull out the wrong one only once before finding what you were looking for. The key goes in the lock smoothly and turns. Room 303 is unlocked. For a second, you think that this door too is stuck, but it turns out your first surprise is that, unlike the rest of the doors in the place, this one opens out towards you. You jerk it open, your pipe ready for trouble. Peering in, you may be in trouble, but not the kind your pipe can readily solve. Before you in the doorway is not a hotel room. Instead, there appears to be a disgusting, rusted out set of service stairs leading downwards. Could it be that easy? Could this lead all the way down to an exit? And are there stairs still in good enough condition to hold your weight? You ease down onto the first step, testing your weight on it. It feels solid enough, if a little damp and slippery. You'll have to be careful on these. You descend slowly, both hands on the railings, testing your weight on each stair before putting yourself onto it fully. The atmosphere is heavy and dank. It seems to grow worse with every step as you descend. Not only that, but even though you left the door open, you soon reach a point where you cannot even see the stairs in front of you. 
You don't know how far down the stairwell goes, or if it does anything other than end in a big pit. You briefly consider pulling out your cell phone in order to conserve your precious lighter fluid, but all the horrifying phone calls you've been receiving have given you an aversion to the infernal thing. It takes you a few clicks to get the lighter started, but once you do, it burns steadily and illuminates the next step or two in front of you before its light is swallowed by the darkness. As you descend, the atmosphere grows more and more tense, almost like that hot, knotted feeling of an infected wound. Goose flesh rises on your arm, and your heart beats fast. You are tempted to turn around and go back, but you press on in the face of the hot, breathy darkness. Finally, when the atmosphere grows so heavy that you expect the demons of hell to come rushing up to meet you, the feeling just goes away, like a bubble popping or fever breaking. The sensation lifts, returning from the diseased depression to the chill, gloomy feeling that has pervaded the entire hotel. You breathe in deeply. You didn't realize you'd been holding your breath. Only a moment later, you come to the last stair, and your flickering lighter illuminates a small, concrete box of a room. In the leaping shadows, it seems that it's empty, apart from a large metal door at one end. You cross the small, empty room, your footsteps loud and echoing on the concrete floor. On your tiptoes, you try to peer out through the bars of the door, but you can't see anything. At all. You wish you were taller. You stand a moment, considering your options. As your light flickers, you make up your mind quickly and put a hand on the door. To your surprise, it creaks open a tiny amount. You were expecting it to be locked, but it's pretty much open already. Did someone use it recently? Taking a deep breath, you attempt to steal yourself for anything. You ready your pipe, in the process, having to spend a moment in the dark as you put your lighter away, and you barge through the door. A cold breeze blows on your face, and your face shines an involuntary grin as you realize you're out in the open air. That joy, however, is jerked away quickly as you realize you're still in the hotel. Sort of. The fog surrounds you. You have a moment of vertigo as you realize you might be very high up. Is this the roof? It's impossible. This doesn't make any sense.